percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, so far, script, let's get right into today's video. Strap in, fasten your seatbelts. The WEF just released a collaboration with Accenture, modernizing financial markets. And Accenture, you guys all know, longtime partner. Since 2015 is when they signed a deal with Ripple and they never looked back. And since then, they have been building the next financial infrastructure. And in today's episode, I'm going to give you a clear picture of where things are going and why people think Brad Carling House is a scammer and why people disliked Ripple. We're going to go back to a video that is five years old, 22,000 views, but you got to listen to this because... Given what was set on this panel and where we are today, I mean, this is just a pat on the back for Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, and the whole crypto ecosystem. Let me let me set the tone on how this video is going to go. Just take a listen to this. I mean, what we, is it? Why, by the way, what is it with this these XRP fanboys on Twitter? You've got XRP is amazing all the time. She's fantastic. What's going on? Are no, you she, paying them to shill? To no, shill XRP? that's re that's a little rude. That's a little rude to accuse him of paying. Well, it's just a question. It's a fair question. It's, we, it's, we do not pay. The, I mean, I, I mean, am it a might be a marketing expense. We have a lot of advocates. Do you, uh, you don't pay them, do you? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, he does. Why them. do you think they're, are they just trying to boost the currency? I, well, I, mean, no, I, wait, I, I think I, most of what they're doing is correcting the record. They're, they're going out and saying, look, somebody says something, frankly, similar to what you said, which is yeah. the XRP ledger is centralized. Yeah. It's factually not it, true. It, 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 Okay, let me see something. So how do you address that? In a way, you pre-mined all this currency, made a, a heck of a lot of money. Let's talk, about, let's talk about that. But then now you're trying to get people to use XP, XRP. That allows, but that's because you had all this crypto left over when you mined it. Like, I, I think as, in a, as a general statement, there's a lot of interesting experiments going on. Do and I, I'll be interested. Ether? I don't own any Ether. But you do Bitcoin. I do. Huh. Oh, I, yeah. It's going to be good. It's going to be a good one. And Monica Long, just a couple days ago, stating that once regulation hits and it's approaching, we are going to really see this whole crypto sector take off. Everybody knows what's about to happen, what's coming down the pipelines. And I cannot stress this enough. We've, we've been saying this on this channel for a very long time. We got to strap in, fasten our seatbelts because retail is going to be priced out very quickly when institutions are here and once the whole infrastructure is regulated. But if we zoom out, what's exciting to me is over the longer arc of time, we're seeing growth and maturity in Web3. And uh, I think a lot of that and what's really exciting about this latest cycle to me is real institutional adoption. If you think about it, some of the biggest brands in financial services like Goldman and BlackRock and Fidelity, they actually built their products and offerings in bear markets, meaning they see the bigger picture at hand. So I think that's what's going to be really different about this year is the institutional embrace and, and takeoff. And before we get into the groundbreaking news that came out today, the stablecoin bill we're going to get into in a moment. And we were right once again, Tether looks like it's not going to be around for a very long time and if you guys haven't already the 0.01 percent xrp club t-shirt link in the description down below for the next 24 hours we are going to do free shipping that you heard that right i'm going to be covering all the shipping costs link in the description down below if you guys are interested and let's continue on so here is the stable coin regulation uh, it hasn't been passed yet, but listen to what they state here. It shall be unlawful for any person to engage in the business of issuing a payment stablecoin directly or indirectly in the United States through any means or instruments of transportation or communication in the United States or to a person in the United States. Wow. I mean, Ripple is going to be regulated from every different aspect. And this rule book to stable coins, I'll leave the link in the description down below. Ripple checks off 
every single category. And this is, they've been planning this for a very long time. And wait and see what's about to happen. Because I believe that Tether is going to be taken for a wild ride. Remember this? She works at Circle, had a policy, and they're utilizing USDC. So here we have a Circle empl- uh, representative that represents USDC uh, talking about Tether and how they're very sketchy. Some of those companies that you just mentioned have U.S. touch points, and I think that the U.S. government should ensure that it's using its authorities when there are those U.S. touch points. If Treasury feels like it doesn't have the authorities, I know that it sent a a number of proposals to Congress late last year around expanding their authorities uh, to cover some of those activities. I personally believe that no company should be allowed to reference the U.S. dollar without having those democratic values inside inside the company, inside their U.S. dollar-backed stablecoin. And so I think if, if Treasury thinks that it needs additional authorities to go over that, then I think this committee should consider that. So to those U.S. touch points, um, U.S. financial services company Canner Fitzgerald reportedly manages Tether's $72 billion portfolio of Treasury bonds, giving him access to U.S. dollars. Canner's enabling of terror and illicit activities across the globe is unacceptable. Uh, Ms. Hill, given Tether's nexus to the U.S. financial system through Canner Fitzgerald, does Treasury already have the authority to take action? And what should we be doing about American regulated companies like Canner? I would think that the Treasury Department would have the authority to take action given this U.S. touch point, yes. Um, and I hope that they're looking at this seriously given Tether's reputation as, as well as the data that we've seen that they're contributing to terrorist financing and other malign activities. Like I said, they know what's about to come down the pipelines. They need it, a very highly regulated entity like Ripple to come out with a regulated stablecoin because we're about to really take off. So getting back into the modernizing financial markets with wholesale CBDCs, digital currency, they cover a lot of points here. Uh, Here we have a team of Accenture and we have Ripple as well here, James Wallace. And there are some big, big names here, big banks, I mean, you name it, they are all here. Every single bank is here ar- around the world. And it's being implemented as we speak. And everybody is learning as we speak. Like we are pioneers and everybody is going through this learning stage, even at the World Economic Forum level. And they talked about fiat backed stable coins. And I mean, look, I mean, this all right here, Ripple XRP, just boom. In every category, you call, you name it. Ripple is in every category mentioned in this PDF. And take a listen to this groundbreaking part. Third-party operator. I haven't been in-depth with this PDF yet because it is pretty much brand spanking new. Uh, But some of the key points, listen to this. Third-party operator. A regulated third-party operator typically equipped with a rule book and risk management controls operates the platform on behalf of the participants. What does that sound like to you? Let me know in the comments down below. And now let's get into what that panel said. Why they dislike Ripple. Remember, I always say on this channel, since day one, Ripple has come into this whole ecosystem looking to work with regulators. You know, Ripple took a contrarian view pretty early in our evolution and said, look, if, if you want to really revolutionize the way payments work, if you really want to revolutionize the way transactions work in this regard, it's not going to happen by everybody giving up their existing infrastructure and just switching to something new. Hmm. The, as much as I am actually a bull on Bitcoin, the Bitcoin blockchain is not, there's not going to be one ledger to rule them all. Ripple invented a a series of technologies built upon the XRP ledger that allows institutions, banks, and even in some cases, governments to take advantage of these technologies and dramatically accelerate the nature of transactions. He's fully into talking points now. Look, I'm trying to explain, the thing I'm getting to is simply the idea that the people who say that Ripple is somehow, your your word, the devil, it's because we're partnering with the man. We decided if you want to enable an internet of value, you've got to connect to the repositories of value. And the repositories of value are the banks. Why couldn't the banks have um, went for a more fully centralized network, though? 
Well, to some degree, that's what they use today. I mean, cross-border payments today, which are slow and expensive. Fully, sorry, fully decentralized, I meant to say. Well, the XRP ledger is fully decentralized. Ripple, the company, cannot control the XRP ledger. Apart from the fact that you control a handful of nodes. We right? control a handful of nodes. But, uh, I mean, we control, I think, something around 7% of all of the public nodes on the XRP ledger. So, uh, I mean, in contrast, you have miners in China that control, you know, north of, you know, three miners control north of 50% of the Bitcoin blockchain. By any measure, the Bitcoin blockchain is more centralized than the XRP ledger. And I just want to play this little part to show you guys that, you know, Brad Gerlinghouse isn't here selling XRP to fulfill his lifestyle. This individual, Brad Gerlinghouse, came into Ripple with already money in his bag and his pockets, okay? This guy is by far trying to scam anybody or trying to sell XRP to get another Lambo. Come on, folks, give me a break, but just take a listen to this part right here. So there's, the, there's, the, there's two answers, both partially true, as to why I went with XRP. Um, the first answer that's partially true is when I decided to do a crypto fund, which was last year, after I made a couple of investments, on my own and through crunch fund um i naturally went to brad because we've become very good friends uh, not everybody knows this but TechCrunch was originally sold to aol and eventually became part of the verizon behemoth uh, because of brad uh, because he was at aol it wouldn't have happened without him he was the primary person that made that deal happen naturally i'm his friend because um, <laughs> he made me wealthy um not as wealthy as him but wealthy and so uh and i also like him as a human being so i went to him in that order he was, yes, in that order. So when I went to him, he was the CEO of Ripple, and so I would talk to him about the fund. And true story, when Brad first joined Ripple, I told him it was the dumbest career move he'd ever made in a, in a, in a long string of bad career moves. And it turns out now he's the fifth richest person in California or something. But I mean, that says a lot about an individual. And here we have Mark Rowling House. Uh, at the time, what, when he, what he mentioned, he was the president at AOL. And that is when they bought TechCrunch. And then Verizon acquired AOL. So, I mean, yeah, it was a, these guys made a lot of money in this whole turnaround. And let's cover this part where he talks about his hedge fund moving 50 million on their first growth. XRP is a fantastic currency to use for, among other things, hedge funds. We need to move a lot of money very quickly. We make investments all over the world. Our LPs come from all over the world. And using banks to move money is a pain in the ass. I mean, it takes a day or two to move money around the world. And with XRP, our, our very first close was 50 million. We moved that money in, and I'm not shitting you, in like three seconds. And I think it cost 20 or 30 cents. Um, that's... That, you really need to think about but, that. But, but that's... And, and so it's let, fantastic to use it for that. The, the, you're moving it using the Ripple protocol, but the problem is, is that... Well, he used the, the XRP of, ledger to do that. He's used, okay, he's using yeah. it, you're using the XRP ledger, but the, there's an issue here. I, I didn't do that, anything. Somebody else did it. But the, I just know that the money moved in like that. Like literally, like that. And it, was, and it cost nothing. And, and that's just to kind of show you the video that we made previously, and I talked about having depth in the market and how you're moving different values, you know, every single, every single second of the day. That's exactly what I mean. I mean, they did f one first close at 50 million and they used XRP. Now imagine that where the whole hedge market, market cap is over $6 trillion. Imagine the value that's gonna be moved in those three seconds and it can't have any price shocks or price volatility. I mean, even though the transactions take three to five seconds, it still will move the market. And that's when depth and deep liquidity is gonna play a big, big factor. And we're gonna wrap up the video with Brad Gerlinghouse when he was asked about all the XRP that was pre-mined. So how do you address that? In a way, you pre-mined all this currency, made a heck of a lot of money. Let's talk about, let's talk about that, but then, now you're trying to get people to use XRP. That allows, but that's because you had all this crypto left over when you mined it. Like, I think as, in a, as a general statement, Silicon Go Valley Google doesn't do didn't, enough to give back. Google didn't fund donors too. Lots of companies in Silicon Valley have a lot of money. I mean, that was a true yeah, it, act I mean, of look, generosity. I, it, I've never been, I, we may be accused of being the devil in terms of how we have partnered with the system. I've never been accused of being the devil for you know, being philanthropic and supporting causes that are actually good for the planet. I, Fair you know, comment. To speak to that. Um, but what about answering the question about... I was trying to answer the question. You want to talk about Madonna. 
<laughs> you uh, were talking about the crypto crash. First yeah. of all, let's level set. 18 months ago, the entire crypto market was worth $20 billion. Today, it's worth $230 billion. Now, granted, in between, it hit about $850 billion, so it's crashed from $850. By any normal measure, if we drew a straight line from 18 months ago to today, you'd say it's been a huge bull market. I also point out, like, there have been, over the last five or six years, multiple, quote, crashes that have been... Uh, effectively reconsolidation and we've seen with that being said ladies and gentlemen i do appreciate every single one of you guys let me know what you guys think in the comments down below but tether the stable coin act coming if you guys have been following my channel it's i mean tether is just so far behind with zero licensing you know we talked about licensing but it's how are they going to come out of nowhere and just get all these licensing and in order to do that you got to be extremely transparent and in order to be extremely transparent with regulators, they're going to ask for a lot of information that, you know, it's either going to take them a very long time to obtain. It shouldn't if they have them on standby, but it's just not looking good. And the only reason why I'm saying it's not looking too good is they have a hundred and eight billion dollar market cap. And let's say if something were to go wrong and I mean, here's let's put on our tinfoil hat here. I mean, like the timing of Ripple stablecoin. Can you guys maybe picture what kind of conversation took place behind those closed door meetings, stating that you know what's gonna be, what stable coins are gonna be around in the next ten years, right? Who has provided transparency since day one? I mean, Tether has never provided transparency. They just started a couple of years ago, and they're not even being transparent. So Ripple coming out with their stable coin, it is a great, great positive contribution to the community because it's going to provide more utility on chain. It's going to attract more users up for XRP because when USDX, when Ripple's stable coin reaches a hundred billion dollar market cap and it will 100%, the value of XRP is going to be very high because it needs to fulfill the market cap of the USDX, as well as fulfill XRP being utilized on other chains in terms of whatever kind of use case they're using XRP for. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. 49 cents, the, the fact that the price of XRP has been where it's at for the past 12 years, that is so bullish. That is so bullish. And I cannot wait until 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, $100 to happen because it will. It logically doesn't make sense for it not to happen. And like I said, 24 hours, free shipping, link in the description down below. If I see you guys wearing this in public, I will come put you guys in a friendly headlock to say it's me. And with that being said, have a wonderful day. With the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. <laughs> I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.